now. Happy, happy vibes, my friends. Welcome back to my podcast, Vibes by Alicia, where I believe in spreading killer vibes that light you up and give you that kick in the ass to craft the life you wish to live. This sacred space is dedicated to the lovers of all things business, travel, and lifestyle. Hey, it's about time you get the scoop on the latest vibes, so let's get to it. So today we're going to be doing a very fun episode. My favorite guest is with me today. Rusk is with me today. And we're doing an episode today about traveling with groups because it's a really big topic. It's something that a lot of people um, ask us questions about. How do we plan it? You know, how do we pick the friends that come with us? Um, So that's one of those uh, those travel topics that a lot of people really have good questions on. And so today we're just going to give you guys a few tips on how we do it. We've done a few. We've had, I guess, what is it, maybe four or five years that we've been really traveling like in in like a nice group of friends, right? Like we have a consistent group of friends, right? Um, But we're always also trying to find other people to maybe incorporate into the group that fit that fit, which is I think the key word is that they fit in the group. So Russ. Before, yeah, there has to be chemistry. Before we get started on that, Rusk is drinking a wine today, and I want you to talk a little bit about the wine you're drinking today because he always has a nice glass of wine when he does the podcast it's with always, me. It's always, it's always, and I love it when you share. When you're doing the podcast, you drink a great bottle of wine. It's becoming a little tradition now. Every time Alicia throws me in the booth, the bottle has to follow. <laughs> yeah, we're I drink, love it. By the way, we're drinking a 2018 Madai. It's uh, the grape is a Godeo, which is from Bierzo in northwest Spain right above the Portuguese border. And uh, it's a good powder pounder. It's a white grape. It's very citrusy and refreshing. It has a little spritzy uh, mineral taste to it. And you can get it at Houston Wine Merchant or you can get it at the Artist Cellars. And it's one of those wines that I feel like gives me like spring vibes. Yeah. Like when you're like out there in the springtime drinking a white yes, wine. Yes, it's definitely powder pounder. It is, it is a spring wine. It just gives me those vibes. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Thank you for yeah. that. I love when you bring those exotic new wines. It's a medium body. It's it's light. It's fruity. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. So let's get started with a few things that we can just talk about. The first thing I want to just mention is something that uh, that Rusk and I just kind of talked a little, touched on a little bit, and fit and chemistry. Why is chemistry so important when you're bringing groups or bringing people together to travel in a group? For example, a group for me is like six, six plus. No, yeah. I think. Yeah. Otherwise it's just really traveling with another couple. So right. It, it, so it's a six, group is six at least or more, six or more yeah. people. You know, it's, it, it makes for a more enjoyable trip. I mean, there's, there's trips out there that you can go solo, but if you're doing a fun trip, you know, you're heading to a beach destination or you're doing something adventurous traveling with other folks, you know, brings good memories, good times, good conversations. And, uh, you know, you, you get to you get to really get to know people. Yeah. But if you don't know them so well, should you invite them in the group? It, it's, uh, you know, it, it's kind of hit or miss. And I like to be very candid about, you know, these kinds of things. If you want to travel with other people, then there has to be certain expectations kind of have to be set forth because right at the beginning, at the right? Beginning, because yeah. it's no fun if, you guys want to do one thing and they just are completely adamant against doing it. And it doesn't always have to be in yeah. lockstep, you know, throughout the entire trip. Uh, you can kind of venture off and do your own thing. But, I, you know, there's there's been stories we've heard from friends where they've completely, they, they land there, they get to their destination and they split apart. Nobody yeah. wants to do anything the other people want to do then you know why go with anybody else yeah and i think i think part of the chemistry too is like if you're going to be traveling with other people are they people that are used to traveling or are they people that are used to having other people handle travel for them like you have to kind of know those people that you're going to be traveling with because if they're seasoned travelers they have specific ways of doing yeah, things right. and a lot of times like you and i are planners and we have itineraries ready before we even go on the plane get on the plane so if you're comfortable traveling with people like that like that like like who we are then you're going to be, you're going to have an okay time if you're okay having us take over and scheduling and organizing, coordinating. But something you do right at the beginning, and this is something that I think is super important, is you always send an email to everyone who's coming along and you're setting the expectation right from the beginning that these are the plans, these are what, this is what we plan to do. And I think you also set a budget. Don't you set a budget right at the beginning? I kind of, I kind of give an expectation of what things are potentially going to to cost because not everyone's always on the same income level or have the same budget elasticity that, you know, other folks can have. So it's, it's, I wouldn't say that I actually set the rules for everybody. That's kind Mm -hmm. of how it's coming Mm -hmm. off. 
I make suggestions mm -hmm. and I hope everybody puts their input because I want everybody to be involved. If you're mm -hmm. going with friends, right? Or you're going with family, you want everyone to feel like they contributed a little bit to the trip themselves. They put their two cents in. And I think it's important that you try a little bit of what they want to do and they try a little bit of what you want to do. And you kind of venture off out of your comfort level because you never know if you're going to come across an experience you've never had before. So I think one of the, the, the tips that I also want to bring up is you have to invite people who are going to be open to new experiences because when you travel, everything is unexpected. Things do not always work out perfectly. You're not in your comfort zone. You're not in, the, in, in, in your typical environment. You're going to be going to places where there's the possibility where you're going to lose um, some time here and there, or, you know, somebody's going to be late somewhere. And if you're going to invite people who are not flexible, who are not easygoing, you're going to have a hard time um, convincing them that this trip is worth making the effort for. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, you got you guys have to have at least a general uh, semblance. There has to be at least some semblance of having some commonality. You know, mm -hmm. if you're the adventurous hiking type, and all you want to do is hike and do zip yeah. lines and you know run and exercise, uh, that may not be for everybody. That right. may be for a certain group of fitness, you know, kind of travelers. Yeah. If you're the type of person who just wants to party all the time and stay out late at night, then you know, you got to find a balance with people that have as more in common with what you want to do than obviously that's less in common. So I think one way to get uh, a, a group going for a trip is like setting an, an, an example. For example, one thing that we love to do is we like to try one country. Yeah. We like to try places where they have wine um, vineyards and when there's wine experiences, there's tastings. Yeah, yeah, right. We can stay in a really cool little maybe um, small hotel that's very conducive to wine. Mm -hmm. So those are when we really invite most of our friends because we have other couples and other friends that yeah, are yeah. also big wine lovers. Yeah, they have to be into wine. They have but, to be. We've heard horror stories of, 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 of uh, people going on a wine trip with other friends and then the husband or the wife doesn't like wine. They're beer drinkers or whiskey drinkers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're miserable I mean, they're miserable so they have to be open to the experience so experience. know what's happening right, right from the beginning this is what we're going to do this is what, what our plans are yeah. um and then another thing that um i that we recommend as we travel with other groups is we like to have a schedule but we don't over schedule it because you have to leave some room for for changes you gotta you gotta leave an open day it depends on how far you're going the farther you go the more jet lag there is uh difference in hours, the sleeping patterns, you have to kind of, you know, to make it comfortable for everybody, you have to have that discussion and see what people's expectations are, how strong they are, energetic. Some people need 24 hours to recover. Some can get up the next morning like myself and, you know, go right at it. So it's, uh, you have to, you have to incorporate all those kinds of little details if you want to have a good time. There, there's folks out there that just kind of wing it. You mm -hmm. know, there's, I've, we've, we've heard of friends that they just mm -hmm. show up and figure mm -hmm. things out when they get there. Mm -hmm. And what they see is what they see and what they don't see, then that's fine with them. But, you know, it's to us, trips are costly. And, yeah. You know, we're business people and everything we kind of see in the paradigm of, of ROI. No, uh, you want to make sure that you right. get to tap everything you wanted to tap, right? right? Exactly. And see everything you wanted to see. So if, you're, if you're traveling 10, 12, 14 hours mm -hmm. on a flight, you try to see as much of it as you possibly can. And I try to figure it out because... You're going to miss things, in my opinion, if you don't organize or plan out your, your your time there. Yeah, and so the people that are going to travel with you, make sure that they're comfortable with that. Make sure that they are they also check off on it before y'all leave. Um, because if they're not going to be comfortable with it, they need to kind of let you know ahead of time. Like, I really don't want to do this or that kind of restaurant. You know, it's just too much of a steakhouse and I don't really eat meat, that kind of thing. Like, it's something that needs to happen ahead of time. Like, those conversations need to happen. Like, you're you're traveling with people with different needs and activity levels. You know, you and I get up really early and we just go, you know. And some people right. like to sleep in right. because they're like, oh, I'm on vacation. Yeah. I'm going to sleep in. So then you have to consider, are they the couple that are going to be able to come with us when right. we do like big cultural trips yeah. or when we do things in a city where we're visiting museums? Right. We're city, where, we're, where you've hired guides. we hired a guide, you yeah. you up at 8 a.m. and you're back at 5 o'clock and there's a lot to see, like in Istanbul or like in Paris or somewhere in Europe or wherever you travel, South America. So you got to set those expectations up front. And, you know, luckily for us, most of the folks that we've always gone with have always been open. They like the idea that we plan it for them. Uh, we let the process kind of, we kind of, 
pitch a few ideas of a few things they want to see and they'll want to see. They say yes or no. We yeah. kind of make it work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can just make it work by doing good logistical planning. It's like find out where this particular uh, uh, monument or this particular piece of uh, artwork is or, you know, this this uh, um, touristic attraction and then you don't want to necessarily see that, but they want to see it. But then you want to see it. Then you can find out they're only 10 minutes away. You can make all that stuff work. Yeah. You just have to do a little extra effort into figuring out the timing and logistics of all that. Right. And so as a group, we can vote on activities we want right. to do. Some people might want to stay in. Some people might want to go out and do that. And that's perfectly fine. I think it's a great, I, yeah. great way to kind of bring in everybody's, you know, thoughts on, on yeah. what on what the activities yeah, are going to be for the day for everybody to, contribute <laughs> to be included we're very yeah type personalities we like to organize all that kind of stuff and, and we yeah have, we'd have a hard time reconciling uh the option of just showing up and figuring things out because we've done that sometimes you know we over plan things and we very kind of strict about or stringent about what uh -huh. we want to see and so sometimes we just kind of roll the dice and and then when you kind of get there you're trying to figure out what to do while you're there yeah yeah and then, it gets, and it's a waste of time. They could have been. Time, right? It could have been done before. So maybe research ahead of time. Um, vote on activities. Be open to new experiences. Um, find a way to stay in touch with everybody in the group. Like if everybody's going to text, WhatsApp. Like how are everybody going to? What's going to be the meeting location? If everybody's going to go off on their own, um, the hotels. You know, you always want to kind of coordinate all of that ahead of time so that everybody knows where they're staying and where it's going to be and what's happening. Um, and I think one thing that we definitely want to stress is like when you're traveling in a group is to be very patient with people and be very flexible and not take it personal when somebody doesn't want to do something. Like, right. it, it's obviously some people are not going to want to do what you want to do. And yeah, absolutely. you have to be super flexible and be patient with them and let them be, let them go, let them do their thing. Not everybody has to be together right. all the time. Some people need three, four meals a day. Some people, you know, just can, one or two, we right? Can do with one or two meals, and we don't. Some of us don't like to eat late, and our bodies are adjusted back home to that, and we don't feel well the next day if we ate too late. So, th those kinds of little idiosync idiosyncrasies can always be worked out because the ultimately the key is flexibility. Yeah, right. You got to have more often what's in common with who you're traveling with, and then leave a little bit on the peripheries for some flexibility and let them kind of do their own thing or let us do our own thing. Sometimes you just want to hang back the hotel, have a glass of wine, just talk. We don't always have to be out and about. And mm -hmm, some folks, mm -hmm. you know, they want to, they want to stay out to one or two o'clock. Yeah. Morning, right? Yeah. So, and that's okay. I mean, yeah, that's okay. just part of the process and like but, knowing that. But as long as the, the main part of the trip, the core part of the trip, we're spending, let's say good 70, 80% of the time together. Otherwise, if it doesn't work out, then just don't travel. Traveling is not for everyone. Not everyone has the same expectations some people are innate homebodies they just like to stay home mm -hmm, they have mm -hmm. no interest or curiosity their curiosity is so know that better. about yourself before right. you can get on a and trip the people yeah you don't. You and can, know the people you that you're going have with long life friendships with people some people just don't have the inkling to go anywhere mm -hmm. so it has to work it has to be good chemistry. just like a relationship it's a chemistry like, like a business relationship or a boyfriend or girlfriend mm -hmm. or whatever yeah else. yeah like a marriage <laughs> yeah uh, and also set alone time, like, you know, if, if it's a big group and you need your, alone, I think that is like so crucial sometimes, especially for me when right. I'm with groups, I really like to just have a few hours sometimes right. in a day just to myself, just that I don't have to see anybody like maybe be in my room, read a book, maybe right. go to the spa, do a massage, yeah. but it's fine. Like it's no, there's, right. I think, I think the problem with some people is, oh, we're traveling in groups. We have to do everything together. And I don't think that's necessarily true. And I don't think that has to be every single time because then what happens is everybody's like super tired of each other and annoyed with each other. And right. if you just incorporate a few breaks right. within the day, yep. I think that really makes a big difference and it helps. No, I, I, I absolutely agree. I've actually, I've actually observed uh, traveling over the, over many years that other couples travel with each other and they'll stay at a resort and they don't see each other all day. I've eavesdropped on conversations mm -hmm. like at the poolside mm -hmm. and they'll go in two different directions and then meet back up at the hotel mm -hmm. at the pool to have some drinks and they talk about their day. I mean, that's strange to me because why travel with other people if you don't want to see them all day? Mm -hmm. You might as well just go on their own. But, you know, whatever works to each his own mm -hmm. and if that's the way they want to run things, then that might work too, but that's not the way I don't see that as being the way of, you know, going with friends or family. Yeah, for you. Right, for me.
Like, right. Mm-hmm. They'll literally disappear for 12 hours and then say, hey, how was this uh, trek or how was this trip or what did you guys see? And I'm like, listening to them at the bar or whatever. It's like, you guys were gone all day, but you came on the same plane, stayed at the same hotel, but you don't want to hang out with each other for the most mm-hmm. part of the day. It's kind of strange. The other thing that I wanted to mention is when you're traveling in groups and you're bringing kids along. You have to remember, this is not just adults. It's just like when you're doing with the kids, that adds another element. Another element. And for me, it's like anxiety because I know what my kids like and my kids, you know, our kids are so well-traveled. Like they travel so easily. They get up at the time we tell them, we say four o'clock in the morning, they're up at four o'clock in the morning. There's no struggle. They eat anything because we've taken them in places and we're like, okay, we're eating whatever's going to be here. We're not going to be picky. We're not looking for McDonald's. We're not looking for Burger King. We're going to eat the food, the local food, and that's what we're going to have. But when you travel with other couples and their kids are not used to it or they don't like that, that makes it hard for our kids because our kids are, so you have to kind of know also like the other families you're going with. Um, are y'all on the same page in terms of like how the yeah. kids get along? Do they actually like each other? Will right. they talk to each other? Will they enjoy yeah. each other's company? You know, sometimes they're like, Oh, they're kids. They'll just get along. It's not like that. They don't just get along. It's no. it, kids, very kids, rarely yeah, that they very do. Rarely. <laughs> kids typically have to know each other beforehand much more than, you can know some friends that you just met recently and say, hey, we're on our way to uh, the Azor Islands or whatever. You guys want to tag along and you never really traveled with them before, but you have some other common things. Mm-hmm. But as adults, you have, you're have you supposed to have the experience and mental capacity to be flexible. Kids right. are a little more, you know, they're a little more rough around the edges. They have to warm up to each other. They do, yeah, they do a lot of sure. sizing each other up. Yeah. You know, if they're going to like each other. And if there's, if there's, a, not a hardcore commonality like sports or the beach and if one's a reader the other one wants to throw frisbees around mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. on the beach or one wants to go see museums the other one can care less then then it just makes it that much more challenging so and then traveling isn't fun anymore it's not any fun no it's all ang- it's all stressful and it's anxiety right? and you're trying to get the kids to hang out together and then you're spending energy and time trying to do that so I think the best scenario is when you travel with your family and the kids really know each other and their cousins, that's your sister, that's your brother, that's my bro- your brother-in-law, your mother, right. your sister-in-law, our in-laws. When we travel that way, like we went to Hawaii for our anniversary, 20 year anniversary, everybody knew the trip for Hawaii was a celebration of our 20 years anniversary. Yeah. So everybody came with that intention. We set up a really beautiful wedding anniversary dinner on the beach. So um, before that trip happened, I said I set a few checklists for everybody, and I said, "This is what we're doing. We're all going to be staying at the Marriott uh, Waikiki. Right. This is what's happening. This is how much the rooms are going to be." Um, and that happened uh, probably about eight months before the trip. Yeah. I think it was maybe eight, seven months yeah, before the trip when we sent everybody right. that note. And we said, listen, we would love for you all right. to enjoy and come with us. But this is where we're staying. This is what's going to happen um, on on this day. Alice is organizing a anniversary dinner. This is how I want you to dress, because also for me, I like to kind of have everything be cohesive and beautiful. Right. So I asked for the men to wear Hawaiian shirts. I wanted the women to mm-hmm. wear um, floral dresses. Right. So there was like there there's an expectation that I set up and everybody gets excited for it because then everybody's like, oh, I have my dress ready for the anniversary. Or, um, you know, I just bought the boys their Hawaiian shirts or, you know, everybody gets really excited. It's like a beautiful anticipation. It's a great way to also get close to people and then say well you know there's a beach there's a pool there's hotels there's food we can have these activities and so then maybe a month or a month before we set up the activities that were available this is what we can do we can do um, what was it that we did we did the the whale watching the the luau yeah we did little trek into the uh, the volcano part of the island it was fun yeah. So that's sort of what we set as an expectation from the very beginning. And so when we get there, everybody kind of knows what's happening and what's going on. And I, and I just find it, I find that people, we get greater feedback when we come back on the trips and then people are asking us, when, when's our next trip? Where's our next trip? When are you going? Can we tag along? Mm-hmm. I think the sense of organization always super sense, always supersedes the sense of disorganization when you get there. Um, I just think it just makes for a much better trip if, if you kind of plan things out, get the experiences in, uh, organized. And everyone always talks about, man, this, this was smooth. This was flawless. Uh, it was streamlined and it was exactly like you planned it. 
but you know, there's always hiccups, hiccups in the road. You know, you can't control the weather. You can't control, you can't control the weather. You can't control bad service. Sometimes you kind of do the reviews and you get, there's a lot of, you know, things that. Yeah. The food wasn't control, as but, good as you thought it was going to be, you yeah. know, you'll go on TripAdvisor or you'll, you know, you'll see right. the reviews in other places. And, the, and that's, that's another thing is when you travel with people, they have to have certain expectations or they have to kind of be maybe seasoned in that particular regard because if you're spending too much money for some folks on taking a trip and then they have these great expectations because they don't travel a lot and then a few things don't fall through and you you yourself have traveled a lot of places around the world and you've seen these hiccups before it's nothing new to you it's just Mm -hmm. part it's just part of the game then they get really disappointed because it's you know they're kind of rookies to this deal Mm -hmm. so it's important to find folks that they can be rookies, you know, to traveling and it's, and, but they have, somebody has to explain to them that, you know, it's, it may not always work out. Like I promise it's to, be open to be open-minded mm-hmm. and then the folks that are seasoned, then it's obviously a lot easier. So it, it's, uh, there, there's just things that are out of your control and you just have to, you just have to set expectations ahead of time. I think communication, just like in, super, and it's super important, important right? right. Communicate all the time. Yeah. Um, and, and like just, also realize that if you're not a planner, you can always hire somebody that, that can plan it for you. And maybe there's tra- a travel agent who just does that for you. And they just travel, group, you know, plan right. groups and do groups and maybe use them as right. as, a, as a mediator right. and to coordinate everybody. You know, if yeah. you don't feel comfortable, yeah, you know, setting right. it up and doing it yourself, there's right. always travel coordinators out there that can Absolutely. do it for you. And they can do that, you know, pretty easily because they're used to it. And they're um, uh, and that can save you some time as well. You know, if you want to just really go on this trip right. without having too yeah, much to do. Yeah, flights get delayed, bags get lost. Uh, yeah, on our know, trip to Paris with, what, 22? 24, 24 people. 24 people. We went, we bags went got lost. Bags got lost. Our flight got canceled, and our, we had to right. rebook it. We were we were all in different, there was 24 people. They were on three different flights coming from different, you know, we are all leaving from Houston, but they all had a little bit, their departure time was a little bit different. I coordinated all that to arrive at the same time, but a winter storm blew through New York. Yeah. And we weren't flying through New York. We were flying from Amsterdam to get to Paris. No, we, we were flying directly to Paris, excuse me. But then we had to fly to Amsterdam because our flight had technical difficulties. The majority of the group was flying through New York to get to Paris. One of those Northeasters was blowing through. The flight was delayed 90 minutes in Houston. Mm-hmm. But they caught the flight to get to Paris, but the bags didn't make it because it was only like 30 minutes. They were yeah. really running at the airport. And then some other folks were coming mm-hmm. in from Michigan. So then we had to all reconvene at the hotel, but we all arrived at different times. So then mm-hmm. you had to communicate. But the good thing on that trip was is that expectations were set. Chemistry was there. Everybody was flexible. Shit mm-hmm. happens sometimes. Yeah, and everybody knew it was going to happen. You can't control yeah. the storm when you book you the can't. six months yeah, ahead of time. Yeah, you don't know you when a storm is coming through. Right. <laughs> you just don't. Yeah. No, and a trip like that, like for 24 people, I yeah. think we started, you started the planning maybe a year in advance, yeah, no? Yeah, it was like six, seven. Yeah, yeah, and then you picked out the the the, the hotels with the other coordinator, right. and y'all with put, yeah, with your right. sister in law, right. and we y'all coordinated everything All in the, the different hotels and the activities, and then um, purchased tickets for 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 we, museums. We, yeah, we purchased tickets like the Mona Lisa, ahead of time. Museum. We did the uh, skulls tour, all that kind of stuff. So that's another tip right. for groups. Like if right. you are going to be in a group, look to see if you can buy your tickets ahead of time yes, so that you're you not you there get, waiting in line for tickets. And, and if you travel with larger groups, 10 or more people, you get discounts. I mean, yeah. they'll, they'll, you know, most of these places that you visit will give you a, a break for doing more people. The other thing I would also recommend is to print out your schedule and have it with you because Wi-Fi doesn't work everywhere and right. 3G yes, isn't like a, available all the time. So right. print it out. Have it ready to go wherever you're going. It doesn't matter if it's just, you know, to one museum. But as long as you have your printouts, right. especially for tickets and things like that. There is something about traveling internationally and your phone, internet, data <laughs> speed not working as efficiently as the locals and their data speed. Yeah. You can travel anywhere in Europe, industrialized country, same internet technology, right? And you can you can pay an extra few bucks on your data plan on T-Mobile or Sprint for AT and T to get high speed data, mm-hmm. but it never works as fast as it does for the locals. So that's just something that you always have to kind of keep in mind. It's almost like the phones are calibrated, and I'm not sure. I'm not a technology guy. I never really looked this stuff up. I'm just taking a I'm just taking a stab at it. The, the phones are calibrated to wherever part of the region or country you're going to to work on whatever 
system it works out over there. I don't know. Just yeah. an observation. Yeah, I think that happened to us when we were trying to get into the Eiffel Tower. We had trouble with our internet yes. and our and our right, right yeah. in front of the Eiffel Tower. In front look, of the Eiffel Tower. But you're looking at the fellow Parisians <laughs> walking next to the internet, it's working fine. Yeah, no, right? we it's the same cell towers, but why is you're not working as good as theirs? Are you paying for the same? I know we were trying to present our credit card right. or IDs. Yeah. Or, I think you had the passports too with you, right? All of that. Also, no. make copies of all of those things right. as well. Like make copies of your IDs. Now, make copies of your vaccination yes. cards. They'll ask you for your vaccination, so make sure you have a copy. If you have right. a phone um, copy on your phone, they'll use that as well. Yeah. Um, so take, take screenshots of everything. Yeah, take screenshots of everything. Make sure you have that under your phone on, on your phone or in something. Or if you want to print it out on pieces of paper, that makes you more comfortable. I definitely do that. Don't trust that it's going to always work wherever yes, you're going. Right. I think that's something we learned, uh, right. the, you know, the take hard way. Take screenshots of passports. Take screenshots of tickets. Anything you buy, reservations, so that we can pull it up on your photos. They don't always accept it everywhere. You know, everybody wants the official you know, email or a printout, but more often not, they'll accept it if it's not working and you can just tell them you're not from here and they'll be able to pull it up on their computer by last name or confirmation number. They're flexible, not always flexible, but you know, that's your backup plan. And you know what? I think traveling in groups is so much fun. I really enjoy traveling in groups because I, especially with our friends, I really enjoy the, just getting closer to our friends, getting to know them a little bit better. Like just that sense of like really being together with the group in another part of the world, like experiencing things right. that are so different from where we, we come from. I think it's super cool and super fun. I really enjoy doing that. And I think if it's something you guys want to do as you plan your trips for the summer, like really plan them ahead of time, set expectations, talk to everybody and go through it. Um, we even talk to our kids before we go out, you know, and do group events with them. And we're like, okay, these, this is what we're planning. Like our kids also know what's going to happen. Like don't leave your kids out of it. Like make them a part of the travel plans because they always want to know like what's happening too. And that makes it easier for when you get there, they're not complaining all the time. Like, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do like, yeah, we told you that's what we were going to do. So that's part of the process. Um, yeah, it goes back to communication. It goes, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like it's so, so important. So, you know, different I think there's just so many different activities you can plan and different find people that you can travel with. Um, but I would say also don't discard the idea that you can just go on like a regular travel. Like we've done groups like to Egypt where we didn't know anybody and we did a group uh, travel with people. Um, and that was really fun because we met some really interesting, cool people. We did it for your for your birthday, for your 40th birthday. We went to China with a big group of people. It was maybe 20, 20 people at the most. Um, and we didn't know any of them. We just met up with all of them in China and we had such a good time. We met people that we had never met before. So you don't necessarily always have to travel with people, you know, yeah. you know, you should also maybe try every once in a while to have a, a trip with people you've never met before. And that's pretty fun too. Yeah. It kind of goes against what we were saying at the beginning, but if you're adventurous and you want to roll that way, um, you know, it's, you don't really have to know anybody well, but you kind of have to have maybe sometimes just the same income level and the same expertise in the traveling and experiences and sometimes you never know it might work out um it's just uh you just have to kind of roll the dice okay so we talked about maybe finding people to help um creating a balanced itinerary setting time aside for for just for yourself um having the group vote on activities to do like having everybody get their input um, make sure that everybody's open to new experiences. Like some people might want to try this, might want to try that. But I think the the concept of traveling is to be open to something new because you're going to a new place. You've never been there before. So be open to what's going to happen. Yes. Don't go over there expecting that it's America and it's Houston, Texas. Yes. When you go into yes. a restaurant, don't expect you're going to get the yes. Houston hospitality yeah. or the Texas Southern Absolutely. hospitality because it is definitely not. <laughs> So when you're traveling and you're going with people, have those expectations, lower them significantly, because right. in America, we definitely do things different. We're very much more. We're more customer service customers, oriented, yeah. oriented down here, out there, wherever you travel in Europe, South America. It's, money, is, money doesn't rule the world out there like it does in the United States. Yeah. You know, to them, it's more experience, laid back, slower pace of life, anywhere you go mm -hmm. for the most part. Even in countries like Japan or China. Yeah, restaurants close for siesta for two they, or three hours. Yeah, they don't they, care. They don't care. They'll kick you yeah, out. They'll kick you if, out. If you're not wearing a proper attire, they can oh, kick you out. Oh, right. 
if they don't like the way you just the way you look, I, I, we were in Paris. I mean, living up to the reputation for Regions. Uh, we were going right. to 24 people. The first place we got there, we're all hungry. He looked at all of us and he goes, nope, they'll have no qualms about treating you like shit if they don't like you for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's not, it's not the same drive that they have here. It's not, it's even at the, even at the hotels or whatever. If, if you, if you go to like Intercontinental Hotel or you go to the Peninsula Hotel, the Ritz Carlton, and you're in Paris mm -hmm. or you're in Amsterdam or, or in Rome, they'll probably treat you well. But if you go to Five Star Boutique Hotel, it's it's a hit or miss. You can find exceptional, great service, but you just don't know what you're going to get when you walk in there. Yeah, that's so true. Very true. All right. So I think we've gone to some really good tips and really um, the other thing I want to mention is you guys have me on your social media. You can also comment on there if you have any specific questions on places we've gone to, things that we've done, activities we've we've um, we do hire like private guides. We do like to 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 have like um, car service, but that does I think that just makes it more convenient for us as we travel. I think nowadays I think you can do whatever you want if you want to just get on a subway or get on like a big yeah, group bus. I mean, there's just so many different things. It, it, it strictly depends on where you. Where you're going and where you're and going and what you're you doing, do, right? It's there's certain there's certain places around the world that require a tour guide. It's not a good idea to go without one. Yeah. Yep. So, do you like traveling with groups? <laughs> I do. I do like traveling with groups. I'm, I've always been an advocate of it. Always trying to look for friends and family to come along with us. And... I think it's thanks to you that I actually go on group <laughs> because I think I'm more of like I just want to go with you. Yeah. No. I, and we, we do. We 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 do for. I will say ninety percent of our travels have been just you and I. I know. I like going with you too. It's always I know. fun. I like going with the boys. I like, you know, they they're kind of at that age where they're a little grouchy and grumpy about going anywhere right I now. Know. They're in their adolescent years. They always told us there's going to be a time when they're not going to want to travel with you. We're yeah. like, ah, no, that's not going to happen. And yep, it happened. No, I, I, <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. I just I was trying to stretch it out as far as I could get it. But I think it'll it'll circle back around eventually later on to them. And not necessarily with their parents, but if we just kind of plant the seed of curiosity, of intrigue, of, you know, trying to understand other cultures, you know, traveling is a window and a mirror at the same time. You look into other cultures, you come back, you reflect about what you can do better to be a better person the next day. Yeah. Um, and I think that's ultimately the the priceless experience that you pay for in traveling. Yeah. Honestly, we've, we've been to some rough and tumble countries, like Morocco, <laughs> Egypt, India. India was by far the, you know, that was the toughest. Yeah. The toughest. I mean, mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm. a billion people, 99% of them are poor and they're a densely populated place with some of the friendliest and happiest people I think we've ever met on a dollar. They, poor folks live on a dollar a day. Yeah. And I also want to mention before we go that if you have a bad experience traveling with certain people, don't invite them again. You're not obligated to ruin your trip or ruin your travel experience because somebody ruins it for you. If you know these people are going to invite you to travel and you just don't want to go, just say no. Yeah. I think it's such a waste of your time and your money if you travel with people who are just going to ruin a trip for you. And there's people that will do that because I know that and I know that it will happen. And if, for example, they say, hey, let's summer, it's summertime, it's our trip, let's do this together. And if you don't want to go and want to go somewhere else, please just say something. Don't sacrifice yourself and say, oh, gosh, I guess I have to go. No, stand, you know, stand up for yourself and say, hey, we're not going this year. We decided we want to do something different or whatever. You have to decide for yourself what your experience is going to be. And some people will ruin it for you. You don't allow it. Like say, no, thanks. We're moving on on our own. Thank you for inviting us. And don't move on to somebody else. Don't invite somebody else. But if you don't have chemistry and you don't do this traveling well together, don't force yeah. it. Because it's only a misery, and yes. you don't want to travel in misery. We have misery every day in our lives. <laughs> our, our daily grind can be miserable. Oh, our God. Monday through Friday, our 8 to 5, or 9 to 5 can be miserable. Traveling is supposed to get you away. It's supposed to be an outlet from that misery. Why bring the misery with you? No, no, you don't want to do that. All right. So keep it at home. Yeah. If you have any questions for us, want to know a little bit more, want to know about group travel, how we plan it, how we do it, where we go, who we ask, how we figure it out, let us know because we're really um, open to just sharing all of that. We really want to get you all out to travel and see the world. I think that's one of the things that 
really makes you grow as a person, really helps you become who you are and grows empathy and compassion for what's going on in your own country, in your own world, in your own little circle. Um, for me, like I remember having getting so much perspective after going to India and going to Peru, going to places where I didn't expect to be so affected by these places and the people that I meet there. And I think it's the same for you. I think for both of us, we right. come back very changed, very different and just having a different perspective in our life and how we approach things and just sort of the, 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 the outlook that we have in life and, and in different things that we do for business or people that we meet and that kind of thing. And so I feel like if you are interested in traveling, do it, get out there, travel in groups if you want to. If you don't feel comfortable traveling in groups, just go on your own, take somebody with you, go with your parents, go with somebody you know, even just going to another city in your state is like is a little travel experience. Do it for yourself because you will be changed. You will be better for it. And I promise you, you will have a good time if you make it work for you. Yep. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me again. I love having hope, you. hope you enjoyed the wine this time. <sighs> Can you tell I did? Yeah. <laughs> we actually, uh, you know, we finished the wine this time first before we finished the podcast. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's 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 true. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Follow us. Let us know. Advise by Alicia. You can also leave a review. I would love that. And if you like this episode, please share it with your friends. Tell everybody about us. I'm looking forward to doing more travel, lifestyle, and business for you all. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye, guys.